You see, I can't cut the price any further and pay my men, he said. I'm doing the best I can for you. I guarantee we'll make a wagon to please you, or you won't have to take it, or you don't have to take it. Well, maybe I'll come back to you if I can't do better elsewhere, Mr. Thompson said suspiciously. Glad to serve you any time, said Mr. Paddock. Then he saw Almanzo and asked him how the pig was getting along. Almanzo liked big jolly Mr. Paddock. He always asked about Lucy. She'll weigh around a hundred and fifty now, Almanzo told him. Then he turned to Mr. Thompson and asked, Did you lose a pocketbook? Mr. Thompson jumped. He clapped a hand to his pocket and fairly shouted, Yes, I have! Fifteen hundred dollars in it, too! What about it? What do you know about it? Is this it? Almanzo asked. Yes, 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 that's it, Mr. Thompson said, snatching the pocketbook. He opened it and hurriedly counted the money. He counted all the bills over twice, and he looked exactly like a man skinning a flea for a tithe and tallow. Then he breathed a long sigh of relief and said, Well, this darn boy didn't steal any of it. Almanzo's face was hot as fire. He wanted to hit Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson thrust his skinny hand into his pants pocket and hunted around. He took out something. Here, he said, putting it in Almanzo's hand. It was a nickel. Almanzo was so angry he couldn't see. He hated Mr. Thompson. He wanted to hurt him. Mr. Thompson called him a darn boy and as good as called him a thief. Almanzo didn't want his old nickel. Suddenly he thought what to say. Here, he said, hand <coughs> here, he said, handing the nickel back. Keep your nickel. I can't change it. Mr. Thompson's tight, mean face turned red. One of the workmen laughed in a short, jeering laugh. But Mr. Paddock stepped up to Mr. Thompson, angry, angry. Don't you call this boy a thief, Thompson, he said. And he's not a beggar either. That's how you treat him? When he brings you back your $1,500, call him a thief and hand him a nickel, will you? Mr. Thompson stepped back, but Mr. Paddock stepped right after him. Mr. Paddock shook his fist under Mr. Thompson's nose. You measly skinflint, Mr. Paddock said. Not, not if I know it, you won't. Not in my place. A good, honest, decent little chap, and you, for a cent, I'll... No. You hand him a hundred of that money and do it quick. No, two hundred. Two hundred dollars, I say, or take the consequences. <laughs> what do you think of that? Mr. Thompson tried to say something, and so did Almanzo. But Mr. Paddock's fists clenched and the muscles of his arms bulged. Two hundred, he shouted. Hand it over quick, or I'll see that you do. Mr. Thompson shrank down small, watching Mr. Paddock, and he licked his thumb and hurriedly counted off some bills. He held them out to Almanzo. Almanzo said, Mr. Paddock, now get out of here. If you know what's healthy, get out, Mr. Paddock said. And before Almanzo could blink, he was standing there with the bills in his hand, and Mr. Thompson slammed the door behind himself. Almanzo was so excited, he stammered. He said he didn't think father would like it. Almanzo felt weird about taking all that money, and yet he did want to keep it. Mr. Paddock said he would talk to father. He rolled down his shirt sleeves and put on his coat and asked, where is he? Almanzo almost ran to keep up with Mr. Paddock's long stride. The bills were clutched tight in his hand, Father was putting packages into the wagon, and Mr. Paddock told him what had happened. For a cent, I'd have smashed his sneering face, Mr. Paddock said. But it struck me that giving up cash is what hurts him most, and I figured the boy's entitled to it. I don't know as anyone's entitled to anything for common honesty, Father objected, though I must say I appreciate the spirit you showed, Paddock. I don't say he deserved more than a decent gratitude for giving Thompson his own money, Mr. Paddock said, but it's too much to ask him to stand and take insults on top of that. I say Almanzo's entitled to that 200. Well, there's something in what you say, said father. 
Finally, he decided, all right, son, you can keep that money. Almanzo smoothed out the bills and looked at them. Two hundred dollars. That was as much as the horse buyer paid for one of father's four-year-olds. And I'm much obliged to you, Paddock, standing up for the boy the way you did, father said. Well, I can afford to lose a customer now and then in a good cause, said Mr. Paddock. He asked Almanzo, what are you going to do with all that money? Almanzo looked at father. Could I put it in the bank? He asked. That's the place to put money, said father. <laughs> well, 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 two hundred dollars. I was twice your age before I had so much. So was I. Yes, and older than that, Mr. Paddock said. Father and Almanzo went to the bank. Almanzo could just look over the ledge at the cashier sitting on his high stool with a pen behind his ear. The cashier craned to look down at Almanzo and asked father, Hadn't I better, better put this down to your account, sir? No, said father. It's the boy's money. Let him handle it himself. He won't learn any younger. Yes, sir, the cashier said. Almanzo had to write his name twice. Then the cashier carefully counted the bills and wrote Almanzo's name in a little book. He wrote the figures, $200, in the book, and he gave the book to Almanzo. Almanzo went out of the bank with father and, and asked him, How do I get the money out again? You ask for it, and they give it to you. But remember this, son, as long as that money's in the bank, it's working for you. Every dollar in the bank is making you four cents a year. That's called interest. When you put money in the bank, the bank pays you a little tiny bit to keep your money in their bank. So if he put $200 in the bank, um, every cent of that is earning, I mean, every dollar of that is earning him four extra cents per year. So that's slight, it's a sight easier than you can earn money any other way. Yeah, it is, it's the quickest way to earn money. Anytime you want to spend a nickel, you stop and think how much work it takes to earn a dollar. Yes, father, Almanzo said. He was thinking that he had more than enough money to buy a little colt. He could break a little colt of his own. He could teach it everything. Father would never let him break one of his colts. But this was not the end of that exciting day. There is one more chapter in this book. It is called Farmer Boy. 